Hello everyone, my name is Anson, and in this tutorial, I will teach you how to build a web API using the Express.js framework. Express is the most popular server-sided web framework in the Node.js ecosystem. It is widely used by many developers. It's in over 20 million projects, according to GitHub. It has over 27 million weekly downloads, according to NPM. And it is used by a lot of companies, ranging from startups all the way to Fortune 500 companies. But why is it so popular, though? Well, mainly because Express.js is very easy to learn. It makes it very easy for you to set up an API in less than 30 seconds. It's unopinionated, which means there's not much. If not, there's really not any overhead at all. You don't have to worry about configuring a bunch of different properties in your application before you can actually use it. All you have to do is just install the package, instantiate the Express app, and then listen to a port, and then begin listening to requests. And that's it. There's no right or wrong answer when it comes to building web APIs using a framework that is unopinionated like Express.js. And because of that, that is why till this day, over the past perhaps 10 years now, Express is still the dominant framework that many people choose to use whenever they want to build their next project. Now, for those of you who are not really familiar with how web APIs interact with other applications, I have a simple diagram over here that we're going to go over. Right now, Express.js, remember, is a server-sided application. So pretend that right over here on the right-hand side, this server is our is where our Express application is going to live. And then we have our clients. So these are typically just regular users that will use your application either on a mobile device, such as a phone or a tablet, or they'll use it on a computer, either via the web browser or a desktop client. Now, let's say, for example, we have an e-commerce website and that e-commerce website, when you visit it, it displays a list of products. Those products needs to come from somewhere. They don't just randomly appear. When you click on those products, you can see more information about it. But where does that information come from? Where does all the data come from? Well, most of the time it comes from a a server it comes from a web API, but the client doesn't just automatically receive that data from the server. The client needs to make what is called an HTTP request. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It pretty much just means, hey, this is how I want to exchange data with you. Okay, there are many different types of protocols, but HTTP is one of the most popular ones out there. So let's go back to our example of the e-commerce app. The moment that you visit the homepage of the e-commerce app, what happens is the code on the client side will make an HTTP request to the server side application. Okay, in our case, it will be the Express API. The Express API will receive that request and it will say, okay, I just received the request to send back a list of products for the client. I don't care how the client uses it. I don't know what they're going to do with it, but my responsibility is just to get that list of products and send it back to the client. So what the server will do is it'll perform some business logic and then it will produce an output. Okay. In this case, the output is retrieving the list of products and the client itself never actually sees this operation going on. So think of it like this. Let's say you're at a restaurant and you sit down, you're at a table, the waiter comes to you. The waiter in this case is the server. The waiter asks you what you want. You request the waiter, Hey, this is what I want to eat. The waiter will send that request back to the kitchen back to where all the chefs are working. So you can think of the kitchen, like the server, you never actually see what's going on in the kitchen all you know is that after a certain amount of time the waiter will come back with a response in this case that response is going to be your food in our case for our e-commerce application the response that we are getting from the server is going to be a list of products hopefully that makes sense and now we are finally ready to dive into setting up our express.js project and writing some code so let's go ahead and get started so right inside my Windows PowerShell, I'm going to go ahead and create a new directory. I'm going to call this Express.js Tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and CD into that directory. And let me just clear up my console. I'm currently using Node.js version 21.4.0 as of right now, the time of recording this video. However, there hasn't really been any major breaking changes with Express.js between different Node.js versions. So even if you're using an earlier version or a later version, you really won't run into any issues at all. So don't worry about that. So let's go ahead and type npm init hyphen y to initialize this 
folder as an npm repository and this will give us a package.json file that's generated for us and let's go ahead and open up visual studio code or whatever text editor you prefer to use and let's just take a look at this package.json file and there's nothing in here uh, for the dependencies just yet we need to install it so let's go ahead and install express so i'm going to type npm i or install I is short for install and then express and just hit enter and now this will install express for you and that's it that's the only package that we need to install it's that simple let's go ahead and install actually one more tool for development I'm going to install nodemon and what nodemon allows you to do is run your application in watch mode so as you're saving changes to your source code, the process will automatically restart based on file changes. So you don't have to manually exit out of the process and restart it again. So I'm going to install Nodemon as a dev dependency. So I'm going to use the hyphen D flag, as you can see right down over here. Let me zoom in a little bit more and I'll type Nodemon. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up uh, a script so right inside the scripts object i'm gonna set up a start colon dev script and this will use nodemon to run our main javascript file so that file doesn't exist yet we need to create it but i'm gonna go ahead and create a folder called source in just a bit and the main file will be called index.js so this will be the entry point to our application i'll create one more script called start and this will just be a simple script to just use the regular node command to run our application, so not in watch mode. So this will typically be for production when you're ready to deploy the API. Now there's one more thing that I wanna do inside this package.json file. I'm gonna go ahead and set this type property. And you can see that there's two values, uh, common JS or module. I'm gonna set it to module. And what this will allow me to do is use ESM as my module system. So that way I can use the modern import export statements instead of having to use require to import modules and module that exports to export stuff. Because I'm using uh, ESM modules, I need to actually change the file extension to MJS in order for this to work. So let's go ahead and do that. And don't worry, everything will still work fine. It really doesn't make much of a difference except for you have the latest um, modern versions of importing and exporting modules. That's really all it is for. Let's go ahead and continue. I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder called source src. And I'll create a new file called index.mjs. And now what we're going to do is we're going to import express from express. Just like that. So I'm basically importing the entire Express module from this Express package. Now the imported value of this Express name is actually a top level function. And we need to call this function in order to create an Express application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first declare a variable. Let me zoom in a little bit more. I'll call it app. And then I'm just simply going to reference Express and then invoke that function by using parentheses and that's all and that's all you have to do now that we have our express app i can reference the app variable and whenever i use the dot operator you can see that there are a bunch of different methods and properties that i can reference now it might be a little bit overwhelming at first but don't worry the method that we need to call is the dot listen method and this pretty much allows you to listen to a port for incoming requests this is actually what starts up the express server on a specific port and then you can begin receiving incoming HTTP requests. So let's go ahead and set a port. Uh, you can pass in really any port you want. I'm gonna go ahead and pass in port 3000, but instead of just passing in a hard-coded number for the port, for best practice, it's best to assign your port to a variable called port in this case. And then you can reference process, which is a global in Node.js. And then process has an object called env. And from here, you can access your environment variables. So we would assume that there is going to be an environment variable for ports, but if the environment variable for port is undefined, then we can have it assign this left-hand value with our logical or operator right over here. Let's go ahead and reference app now and call dot listen and pass in port. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pass in a callback function. So you can use this to perform post-processing operations once your server has uh, started up. So maybe if you wanna send an event to some centralized logging system, 
So that way they know that the server was just started up at this time. You can do that inside this callback function. However, I'll simply write a console log and I'll use string interpolation. Um, and then I'll go ahead and write running on port and then I'll log the port. Okay, so let's go ahead and start up our application and make sure that it works. So I'll go into the terminal now and I'm going to run that start dev script. So let's type npm run start colon dev and now you're going to see that nodemon will start up this application and you can see that now it says running on port 3000 now if you want to test this out you can simply just go to your web browser and just type localhost colon and then the port number that you are listening to requests on since i'm listening to requests on port 3000 i would type localhost colon port 3000 right now you can see that it says cannot get and this is because we don't have anything registered just yet Okay, we need to actually register what's called a route in order for us to start requesting something from the server and then receiving a response. So hopefully this all makes sense.